I'm Nikki Newror. I am an actress, writer, model, producer, and director. And I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Welcome back, everyone, to another incredible episode of Chat with Dan. For today, we have on the show the incredible, amazing, badass Nikki. Nikki, how are you today? Hey, hey, I'm doing great. Thank you so much again for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Absolutely. I mean, what better way to have an epic, fantastic day than to be chatting with someone as bad as you? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I hear you. I hear you. I try to have a fantastic day every day. You know what I'm saying? I love it. I love it. Now, for those who are watching, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, follow. It helps a lot. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about this epic chat we're about to have. And without further more, let's jump in. Now, Nikki, for those who don't know who is incredible, amazing, badass superstar, please tell us who you are. Yeah, yeah. So I'm Nikki Newror. Um, I am an actor, model, director, writer, producer, um, insane person. <laughs> That's like the best way to lump it all into one. No. Um, I've been I've been working in the industry of entertainment since I was about 18 years old and um, loving every minute of it. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And tell me, yeah. like, what were some of the like, what were some of the challenges, you know, so you decided to make this a career, you know, make it happen. I mean, what were some of the challenges that you first had when you were, you know, making those steps, let's say? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there there were countless challenges. I mean, how much time do you actually have? <laughs> Right. There were so many challenges. Um, the biggest one was just staying motivated um, the, and like getting the gusto and the gasoline in my end and to like keep going and to actually do the thing because so much of it is just your own motivation and passion keeping oh, yeah. yourself going, you oh, know. Yeah. And how you deal with the stress, you know what I mean? Because like doing, yeah. like it happens, right? That whenever you want to do a lot of things it can get to a certain moments in which you get stressed like how you handle that stress of uh perhaps that you're doing something and it's not cut it and then you need to switch to something else you know things like that yeah i mean you pretty much said it it's like i i am very much one of those people who keeps my head on a swivel so mm -hmm. like and i also have a really short attention span <laughs> so when i get overwhelmed when i get stressed it's very easy for me to just direct that energy somewhere mm. else you know what i'm saying uh there's so many projects and like so many projects waiting to be found so if if something's not working why force it just just go to a different outlet mm, i like it and focusing a little bit on your acting career you know let's start with that and tell me like how you prepare a character and now you understand of course that depends on the role right but like what are your yeah like your usual steps before jumping in yeah yeah i have uh i have a process i definitely have a process um it always kind of starts with getting to know who my character is okay. and what they're trying to achieve i'm a big fan of uta hagen um her studies and beliefs behind acting with the questions um, love to ask myself the questions of a character, such as where they're from, what they're thinking, how they feel, why they do certain things, um, really just allowing my brain to kind of mesh with the brain of the character, find that soul, if you will. Um, that's where I start. And once I get kind of like a good grasp on that, that's whenever I dive into the lines and I really start to like get, you know, my job going. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, Because I, I find that learning the lines is so much easier whenever you understand the intention behind mm, them. Mm -hmm. And how tough can it be when when you are, yeah, when you're about, yeah, when you're going to play a certain scene or so, on something that you haven't kind of um, lived, you know what I mean? I mean, I, I would assume that that's kind of a little bit of a, yeah, like the, like a challenge, let's say, when you're about to be on a on a certain scene that you haven't been in your life or it is, or, or it is like nothing nothing like you you know you, like you know what I mean yeah absolutely absolutely and I think that part is that's that's where our biggest jobs come in as actors because because we we have to do the due yeah. diligence of researching those roles you know and understanding how those people lived because I mean we'd be blessed if we always got roles that are things that we've lived you know that's easy acting right we we can tap into the little spots where we were familiar with those emotions but Those new experiences, yeah, you really have to be able to put yourself in those other people's shoes and and live it, you yeah. know. Yeah, and is there any type of role that you would refuse to play? I don't know, maybe because the message on it is not something that you believe in. You know, I don't think I would actually have anything that is like off the books. I I would I would 
I would do it all if, if it was given to me and it has the right intention behind it. I definitely think that everyone has a story for sure. So mm -hmm. why doesn't every story have a deserving moment to be told, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And would you, if you, yeah, if you got the chance to go back a little bit on time before, you know, wanted to make this as an acting career, mm -hmm. what advice would you have give to yourself before becoming an actor? Hmm. That's a great one. Um, the advice, there's so much, there's so much, <laughs> uh, of course. Um, but if there's anything that I would say, it's just to never let that little fire inside die. Mm. Let that self-motivation, believe in yourself. It's the hardest thing to do. It's the hardest thing to keep going to because yeah. we are our own biggest self-critics. We can stare at our social media pages and our headshots and our resumes and you know, pick out every little thing that we're not happy about with ourselves. The thing that I would tell my past self is just let that be bullshit. Let that stay in the background as background noise. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. That's not the forefront. That's not the focus. We know why we're here. We know why we're doing what we're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Keep that true. Absolutely. You know, I, I find I find pretty, yeah, like pretty interesting how like the whole game changed, you know, that now if you want to become either an actor, musician, model, I mean, yeah, you, you, you need to craft on that, but you need to also craft on the whole, as we were speaking before, the whole social media stuff, you know, marketing, you know, you, you need to find, you know, like all, like all of the things, which, which I do think at the same time, that it gets the job a little bit more complicated and annoying at some point, uh, you know? Absolutely. Oh my God. Yeah. No, I was saying to somebody, I, I can't remember who, but like thinking back to the 1950s or the 1960s, whenever Hollywood was like really starting to boom and everything and yeah. you showed up, that's all you did. <laughs> you walked outside the line in front of the studio with your headshot and resume and you just showed up. But nowadays you're absolutely right. You have to have the full branding package ready to go. Otherwise you won't be seen. It's nuts. Yeah. yeah. Plus you are, I mean, you're not competing anymore with local. You're not competing with people from other states and even from other countries at the same time. So right yeah yeah, yeah. In the same sense that's like such a wonderful thing it's such a True. wonderful thing because it's it's really broken down the like glass walls of like mm -hmm. exclusivity i i love i love yeah. the fact that anyone anywhere can do this um not to digress but i did i did some training um online not too long ago and it was just remarkable to me that I was able to be in a classroom with people who were in Colombia, Spain, uh, like mm -hmm. all over the place. And we were all learning the same thing. And it's just like, <laughs> yeah, okay. Back in the 1950s, couldn't do that. So I'll take it. Yeah, that's true. I mean, at the end, it also opened a door for, I mean, besides, besides you meeting new people who are, you know, on the same, on the same industry, it also right. gives the opportunity to like, know to new people as well to, you know, to like to raise a hand and be like, you know what, I'm here too, you know? And also, yeah. I do I do appreciate that every now and then they will be releasing projects with that that people that are locals. You know what I mean? For example, if yeah. it is I don't know uh, a Norwegian film, right? They will mm -hmm. use Norwegian actors this time. You know, which I find interesting. Back then, that I don't know this will be a movie in China or in Japan, for example. You know, yeah. and suddenly they speak English. You know, like perfect, like hundred yeah. percent. I mean, I understand that they will have to reach you know an A-list actor to sell the film. I get it, of course. But now it's cool that uh, that at least now there is there is now room for everyone. You know what I mean? Right, and representation. Yeah, that's the most important thing. Absolutely. I yeah. Love that. Yeah. And tell me, like, focusing also on your uh, when you were about the, yeah when you're in this uh, creation process, do you usually take your characters home, and has that ever affected you in a you know negative way? Um. Yeah, I absolutely have. Um, okay taking characters home <laughs> and it has it has once or twice affected uh myself and the home in a negative way yeah um that's that's the thing you got to be careful about i am one of those actors who i try to get in as deep as i possibly can and i take my work really really seriously mm. um to a fault at times um but with that well let me answer your question first um yeah it was it was an intense role. It was a very um, dramatic, intense role that involved a lot of anger, you know, a lot of deep rooted mm. anger and a lot of festering that I really had to think about and, you know, digest as the actor playing this role. And I was bringing it home and I was just snapping. I was snapping at like every little thing would make me <laughs> like explode. Yeah. Um, 
And it just, it wasn't good. And it was definitely taking a toll on like my, my positivity, like my mental stress load and all of that stuff. Um, so, you know, you just have to be able to really pulse check and like check in and find yourself in mm. the roles that you take, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And how you break the character. I mean, let's say you finish a project, it's done. Like how you, like, what is the thing you kind of do in order to return to be the real you you now 100 percent yeah um huh. i'll let you know when i find it um <laughs> but no i guess the closest thing that i do to that is i i try i i try to steal something from whatever production i'm from that's like from my character just as i have like a memento and i have in my living room this uh this curio cabinet that is filled with all of my things from past performances whether it's you know film modeling theater anything i try to take one little thing um because the way that i see it is i put a little piece of my heart into mm. my soul into every single one of my roles i deserve yeah. to take something a little bit material back um yeah. so it's kind of like yeah it's kind of like keeping grandma's ashes i don't know <laughs> you get to have the memory there and uh you know think of it fondly so <laughs> that's what it is Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, as you mentioned, the fact that you, yeah, even though that you're about to play this character, at the end, it's you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's understandable yeah. the fact that you want to keep a little bit of something, you know, just to remind, you know, perhaps I did this or also to be like, like as a reminder, yeah, like as a reminder of the things that you are able to do, you know? Right, right, right. And also, like, that was a piece of me that was a not really me so she is gone now she is put away she is on the shelf yeah. you know yeah yeah plus it makes your house look a little bit of a museum so that's pretty cool yeah yeah that's i love that yeah i've got i've got a wild place this 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 white wall is like the only plain white wall we've got <laughs> i like that you know you have now i mean i would assume that whenever someone comes to your house it's a great yeah they, they have a, i mean we, we will have a lot of topics of conversation due to the all of the things you have there you know what i mean For sure. Absolutely. Come on like over. It. We'll have a chat. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Now, moving a little bit on your modeling career, tell yeah. me like, like what are like, <clears throat> how you prepare for a, you know, for like, for a, for a photo shoot, you know, do you usually yeah, yeah. have like, um, a, have like your playlist stuff? Like how, like, how's that that thing for you? Yeah. Um, so I, I usually start the night before night before I, I like try to get the whole skincare regimen in there, make sure everything is spick and span, get good stretches and all that. Because a lot of my modeling is full body modeling. So I have to make sure everything is like tight and toned and yeah. looking its best. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, so stretching, skincare, good night's sleep. That's hey, there you go. St stretching, skincare, sleep. The three S's. That yeah. is how I prepare for modeling right there. I like it. I like it. <laughs> and GPS like it. route. <laughs> <laughs> and once the whole session is done, you go home. What is the thing you like to do first? Like once it's done, you're like, okay, I'm about to do this thing now. Hot bath. I always go for a hot bath because I can get the makeup off. I get the, you know, the hair off. It's like a cleanse, a full cleanse. Come back to me. Mm. I like that. Yeah, I yeah. Sort of, yeah, it's understandable. You know, I have I have uh interview models here and there. And yeah. it's it's so interesting because I mean back then I didn't know anything about modeling, right? But once I started like speaking with models, it's so I mean you get the chance to understand certain stuff. For example, the fact that is that physically it is it is super exhaustive, as some people might think. The fact that you need to still yeah, the fact that you need to be totally still, you know, not moving. Oh, yeah. And especially for when you're about to promote like any sports brand or things like that, that is that you need to look like you're forcing the muscle like you are on the move, you know, like things yep. like that. Yep. But at the end it will it will break you, absolutely. You know, you will be like oh, really yeah. devastated of the whole uh physique part and especially if it is like in a uh if the weather conditions are kind of a little bit extreme at the same yeah, time you know absolutely absolutely everything everything is a factor um whenever i was a little kid like modeling whenever i was a little kid i would say maybe like 10 years old when i was 10 years old modeling was like my number one i wanted to be a model more than anything never yeah. grew past five foot two so fuck me um <laughs> but sorry i don't know if we can swear um yeah, you can but... swear it's okay Okay, great. Fantastic. Fucking fantastic. <laughs> But um, yeah, no, I, I was like, yeah, I want to be a model. I loved America's Next Top Model. I was just like so into the looks and the fashion and all that stuff. Yeah. 
And, you know, I wanted it for the glam. And then whenever I was 18 and I actually started doing the thing, I remember like coming home from my first shoot and oh my God, I was like sore in every part of my body and like parts that I didn't know I could get sore. And it's like, Mm -hmm. how does that happen? But then you think about yoga and Pilates and all these other things where you're posing and holding it. And like, it makes sense. Once you actually think about it, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. As I said, I mean, it's a whole, it's a whole other world that, that we, those who are not there, we just don't know about it. Whenever we get like a small taste to it or we know about you, you're like, okay, now it makes more sense why, you know, certain patterns. Or for example, I have noticed that, that whenever they're done, they will go to eat something like some, like, you know, like a pizza, a burger, you know, like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like something to spoil them. And I'm like, yeah, it makes sense. You know, I would do chicken this. tenders and fries with honey mustard. That's my thing. For that your jam? Yeah? Okay. Mm. yeah i like that mm. okay okay <laughs> yeah now tell me like let's say you know that one day you know what screw it i want to become a model one day you know i'm on my 30s i want to become a model tell me what advice would you give to someone who hasn't done modeling at all but, but it's like you know what screw it just want to try this now modeling and modeling good luck i mean i hate to be that guy but like <laughs> in the 30s i and modeling is such a I hate to call it toxic, but it is kind of a toxic industry. You know, I mean, you got to be a specific yeah. little thing to be able to break into it. But but if we're if we're speaking in the perfect world, um, in your 30s, you want to break into modeling. Just do it, you know, find mm. somebody who you trust with a good camera, get some shots taken. That's that's the first part uh, is just getting those shots out of the way, because you know what? looks are interesting and you do have instagram nowadays which is like your own personal portfolio that Mm. anyone who is anyone can access it and see it so you just got to start yourself just got to get off your seat and do it and that's the same exact advice that i would give for starting with acting and directing and writing is just dive in give yourself the opportunity to do it and fail maybe and just you know, it's all an experience. And as yeah. long as you treat it as an experience, you're only going to get better and better as you go. Yeah. Yeah. I have discovered that the best, that the most healthiest way to do things is just to enjoy it and take it as an experience, you know, because if you focus yeah. about, um, you know, if you focus about certain stuff, I don't know, let's say money, for example, I mean, yeah. you will get frustrated, of course, you know, because yeah. you know you tend to like like whenever we're what whenever you're about to start doing something you you tend to be like you know what the sky is the limit i'm gonna go reach for the stars and things like that and yeah of course it's possible but we but we forget the part about it's a process you know that yeah. it's, it's, it's a ride it's gonna take some time and even though because one time someone told me that even that if you are extremely lucky and then out of nowhere boom you hit it the problem now is going to be for you to stay in that momentum, you know, and not fall again, you know, which is yeah. hard as well. So, yeah. 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 yeah no, absolutely. I, I think I remember reading something way back when Catherine Zeta Jones won an Oscar um, yeah. and she gave an interview afterwards and she was like, well, now I'm like scared because like <laughs> once you win the Oscar, you've kind of, you've done it right. Every actor is like, I want to win that Oscar. I want to get that big accolade. Yeah then what what do you do then like you have to like you said sustain some type of greatness and and majesty and god bless Catherine. she's done it um if you're listening Catherine, we love you but <laughs> um yeah no it's it's really and that comes back to like keeping it all fueled you know keep your engine fueled because it is a process you have to understand that it's going to take time and yeah. that lucky ticket it's rare you get it good for you yeah. but and and also process. and also we can see for example this uh, the, you know the oscars happened a couple of months ago that brendan fraser won i mean he was uh, yeah. he was out like like what like 15 years something like that right he was for like a long time yeah and then he came back with his with his film he won yeah. the oscar and that was like kind of i mean i took that kind of a little bit of as a proof that you i mean that it's never too late for you to reach for something you want. You know what I mean? That it's never, that, it, that of course that it takes time, but if you stay focused on what you want, you're going to achieve great stuff. And you know, here we are. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah, that was pretty cool. And tell me like, now that you were mentioning, you know, like the whole Instagram, I once spoke you know, with, uh, with a model as well. And she was telling me that one of the parts with Instagram, with Instagram now, 
is that now one of the bad things, let's say, is that sometimes they will use their photos without their consent to use them to promote certain stuff. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. has that ever happened to you? It's never happened to me. Knock on wood. Um, but yeah, no, I, I've actually I've heard on so many occasions yeah. of like people that I know having happened to them. Um, it's horrible. It's terrible. I and mean, that's like, ugh, yeah, hate it. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, it's. Yeah, it sucks. It's your job, and now the fact that there are that there are, like some people are using it behind the scenes without your yeah, you know. yeah. Well, not only that, it's like it's disgusting because it's like how how far are we away from identity theft at this point? If you're using somebody else's photo, why is that not considered the same type of offense as using somebody's credit card to make a purchase? You know? Yeah, yeah. Or Whereas even nowadays, this... you know, identity is so important. It's so important yeah. nowadays. Yeah. Or even with the whole the AI stuff, you know. The other day, I was. Uh... Yeah. I was I was checking this video that that now so that now like musicians are having like this problem because now they're using these programs to to create songs you know with their voice but they have but they don't even do that you know and also like actors as well that they will use this program to play their voice to say something you know and it's I didn't hear about the musicians one but I did know about the actor one um yeah I knew that that one is that's like a huge huge threat right now um. But of course, I should have known. I should have known that it was for music too. God, yeah, I don't know how I feel about all the AI stuff. I, yeah. uh, I'm not the biggest fan. I'll be yeah, honest. Me I, uh, I see everyone going like crazy for the Chat GPT or whatever mm -hmm. the hell it's called, and I just, as a writer, I'm against it. Please don't take my jobs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> and but but at the same time. I don't think like an AI would be able to do that because I mean at the end of the day it doesn't have like the human touch, you know what I mean? Like the like the human side that we all that we all enjoy. And also, yeah. I mean the fact that they're using that stuff. I mean the other day, um uh, yeah, the other day this cousin uh he got into he got uh, yeah, a problem in school because he did an essay with you know with this whole chat stuff AI and he got caught and when he was telling me that I was just laughing and I was like, wait a minute, so you so you're using this program that basically has everything for you. Yeah. And you got caught. Yeah. Like it was like, yeah, I was like, you know what? Back in my day, I have to go into a website and search for that. And it took me hours for search for stuff. And they needed to be extra careful not to copy the exact same thing. Otherwise, you're going to look that, you know, because they knew yeah. the websites. And you have this thing that, that basically do everything for you. And you got caught. Are you kidding me on that? But, <laughs> you know, but at the same time, I was like, like, at like, what is going to happen, you know, in the next 10, 15, uh, 15 years, you know what I mean? That yeah. this whole stuff, I mean, I've, I, I I do hope that at some point it kind of gets regulated or something. It has I think, to. Yeah. I mean, it has to. It absolutely has to. Um, I did see somewhere, uh, it might have been on like a Reddit thread or something, but uh, somebody was saying that schools, schools might be moving towards a more verbal essay formats rather than the written so that they can avoid dealing with this chat oh, yeah. bullshit. <laughs> yeah, that would be like, yeah, crazy. Would be. I I would hate to do a verbal essay. You know? Can you imagine? Yeah, I would. Oh uh, no, 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 no. That's why. Yeah, I like. I remember back then that that yeah. Whenever I would have to do like a verbal stuff, I was like, you gotta be shitting me. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. You know, I would I have like, like pit stains oh, okay. the size of Texas. Yeah. Just no boy no. Mm, all I'm just, over. I'm just gonna. It. I'm just gonna fail on that right now. So just better. You know. <laughs> exactly exactly give me the f take the yeah. f <laughs> now moving on here tell me like with the whole writing stuff like how you yeah. like what like what usually triggers you for you to start writing something um ideas ideas i really get these like flashbulb ideas of um like yeah. sketches idea i said ideas like how many fucking times sorry <laughs> um but it's it's literally it'll just spark in my head and if it's good enough I'll write it down. Um, sometimes I'll have I say if it's good enough usually there'll be repeat offenders like I'll get the same idea that keeps coming back. Yeah. If it's not good enough it won't come back. Um, yeah, that's 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 how my first feature started actually. I just finished writing a feature length film. Uh, we produced it, filmed it, everything, and it all started off. I was sitting I was sitting on my couch at like. 8 30 at night and like mm. watching something dumb and I was like huh you know that would be a funny idea wrote it down and then bada bing bada boom we go. were there and it was yeah it was nuts yeah and you usually have like a yeah like in a specific time for you to finish a project or you or you just like you know what I'm just gonna write this down and 
whatever I will get inspiration, I will continue doing that. Or if I get inspiration for another one, I will start writing another one and I will stack this up. Yeah, it depends. It depends on what it is. If it's uh, if it's something little, I usually I'll be completely honest. I, I do have like stats of unfinished projects. That's cool. <laughs> um, but that's usually because they're just little projects, you know, little musings that I want to get to at some point, and I will. Um, but the bigger ones, I I, I do buckle down. I, I make it a point. If it's something that's really important to me that I really believe in yeah. that I need to have happen. Um, I'm so used to not having things like go right for me by just waiting. So I always do the thing, mm. you know, if I have it in my lap and I need it to happen, I'm going to do it to make sure it happens. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And tell me about the, like the whole, like, how does it feel whenever you wrote something and you are actually seeing it play now? Like, how's that? Like, how's that feeling? <sighs> it's, Unlike anything, I mean, I could I could start crying right now just thinking about um, yeah. the last event, the last time I got to see it happen. It, it's really, really surreal um, to go from ideas, mere ideas that you're writing down on a notepad, um, like scribblings, if you will, to a timeline, to a script, to seeing the audition tapes of the people reading the script, to seeing the film like right yeah. in front of you. It's 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 kind of like watching your child be created and born right before your eyes. Um, it's unlike anything in this world. <laughs> yeah, but I can, I can, yeah, yeah. I like that. I love that. You know, there was like what, like a month ago? Yeah, like a month ago, my parents found like this box with old with old tapes that they used to record. You know. Yeah. And, uh, with the anyway, my point here is that I found a film that I did back then, I was like, what, like 10 years old, that I did, oh, a, wow. that I did a film with my toys, you know? Oh, I love that, like a stop motion where yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh. And, uh And I did that and I was, and I remember that when I watched it, I was just crying because I was like, I can't believe, you know, like, like it's so, it, it was, it, yeah, it was kind of a, like a very emotional moment because I was like, how was how I was able to do that? I mean, of course, it looks crappy, but you know, um, but it's my thing here. But I was like, like, wh like where that where that creation went. You know what I mean? Like yeah. where like where that went. So I've been working on that to be like, okay, I want that whole imagination creation back again, because yeah. even though that yeah, of course it's crappy. It's I mean I loved it because I was like I was able to create something out of you know with my toys here, and, and I remember uh, yeah, like when I saw the other video, that it looks basically that I just create everything at once you know like i basically with the script and everything i was like i'm just gonna do it at the moment at the go at the get-go and see what happens and yeah, yeah. It was pretty emotional stuff yeah i like that i love that i love that yeah i mean and the fact that it is emotional shows how much you care you know yeah. if we didn't get emotional about actually moving forward and seeing that you know we were little people once who had dreams and we're actually doing those dreams it might not be at the scale that we expected but we're doing totally. the dreams you know it's totally it is emotional. We yeah. love to embrace the emotions. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Now, you know, let's say that for your birthday, you get a time machine. Now, here's the catch. You can only travel once and to meet the 13-year-old version of yourself. So what would you say to that little you? Well, what would I say to the 13-year-old? Mm -hmm. I might get emotional on this one, too. <laughs> Hit it. Um... I would say I love you. Um, I would just tell her that I love her. You know, it's going to be okay. Um, I didn't have an easy childhood. I didn't mm. have any easy time growing up. It was, it was, it was, it was time. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, I would just reassure her that she's loved and like she's doing everything right. And even though it's going to get rough and rocky, she's loved. Yeah. Preach on that. That's it. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. I, did. I mean, at the end of the day, back when you were, you know, when you're a teenager, 13 years old, you don't know anything about the, you know, you don't know, you don't know anything about anything, basically, you know, you just had to go enjoying life and discovering everything. I mean, you're naive as well. So you are, right. you know, you will tend to be, you will tend to be this huge role of mistakes. 
but you know it's part of the whole experience you know because absolutely it, absolutely it, that's life baby that's life yeah. <laughs> hang on because it's a ride yeah i mean at the end of the day it's it's part of the whole experience you know and and i do think that it's those moments you yeah like it's it's those moments you have been on you know regardless if you have like a yeah like a difficult childhood or not that will build you sure. that will build character for later on and of course it's challenging because you need to overcome that you know because we yeah. we will her stories either for friends or or close ones you know that they have also not very easy and they stuck you know they got stuck and they haven't been able to kind of get on to the next step you know like to the next level so sure. i can yeah i can applause and i can admire the fact that you were like even though that that that, that had these issues you know what screw it i'm still gonna make this happen if you him and you have become until what you are right now which is amazing you know what i mean thank you thank yeah. you sir Absolutely. Now, let's say, you know, that one day Netflix, HBO Max, Disney Plus, you name it, they call you and they tell you this idea which goes, they're going to make a film in which all of the characters you have played at the moment, they're all going to gather to celebrate your birthday. But here's, but here's the thing. The film needs a name. So how we call it? <laughs> oh, God. Um, it would be probably... Um batshit birthday bash too i would say that hmm. <laughs> um yeah it would, it would be like the most insane birthday party that there was i played a lot of drug addicts a lot of alcoholics um the occasional prostitute um but also the cat in the hat would be there somewhere so it's a very strange birthday party <laughs> yeah but i'm about it like i want that to happen call hbo tell them we're ready <laughs> sounds like a plan Let's make it happen. Now, what about describing your whole career, but this time on a drink? How do we call it and what would it have? Ooh. Is it a drink that already exists that I should use or should we create a new drink? It's up to you. One that's already established? Up to you. Well, we'll, we'll use one that's already established because that, that's like a easier. Um, probably just whiskey on the rocks. Uh, the mm. reason behind that is because... Whew, She's been strong. It's it's a strong, full-bodied taste that leaves a smoky afterthought. And it's just full-bodied in your face right then and there. You better order it. If you order it, you better like it. Mm. <laughs> that's that's why we'll call her whiskey on the rocks. Okay. And take your time to drink it, you know, not drink one and then ask for the other one because otherwise it's gonna be a wreck. Just I mean, time. if you want to drink one a day, I... <laughs> sure. not me per se, but yeah, I agree. That's fine. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> isn't it, you know, it's an experience here. You need to enjoy it, you know, take your time. Yeah. You know? No, absolutely. Why You're rush, right. Right. you know? For sure. Yeah. Now, like what motivates you? You know, we all have those days, right? That we just want to quit. Regardless of what we're doing, we just want to quit. So, what usually motivates you back, you know, to be back on the horse and to continue on this road that you have built for so many years now? What motivates me is uh, having the ability to, to make an impact, um, mm. to be able to not only just be a storyteller with myself, yeah. Um, yeah. but to give back to somebody, uh, whoever might be in that audience, whoever might be viewing a picture or a video or whatever it might be that I have produced and created um if they can feel something if they find something from it then i've done my job um i love i love nothing more than whenever somebody feels something from a performance of mine i love doing theater theater acting is like one of my favorite forms of acting just because you get that instant gratification mm -hmm. um you get you know you get to bow and do everything hear all about it and know it and i i just i it's a wonderful moment whenever somebody from that audience says, holy cow, like, you got me. You made me feel this. You made me feel that. You made me think about this. Like, just just making somebody feel, that motivates me. Amazing. I love it. And if you get, let's say, if there, if there was one thing <clears throat> you could change about either the film industry or the model industry, what would it be? Ooh, that's so good. That's a great question. Oh, I think if I could change anything, hmm, 
What a wonderful question. There's a few things, but the, the biggest thing that I believe that I would change first is that I would just take it down a couple of scales with the extravagance, if you will. And I think we're already on our way. I mm -hmm. think a lot of the bigger studios are taking a bit of a backseat to a lot of the indie film studios and indie production yeah. companies, which is really great because that's where we're getting all the real content, you know? That's yeah. where we're getting news stories rather than the regurgitated remakes of like, you know, whatever movies in theaters, now it's all remakes. Like, give me that new content. Um, so yeah, what I would change is just keep on getting those new people in there. Give us fresh content. Let the little guy scream and speak because he's got good ideas. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Those type of films, they tend to be interesting. I do enjoy them because, I mean, besides getting the fact that you are, that you can see sometimes really great stuff created with a little budget compared to, yeah. you know, other type of productions that they will spend crazy amount of millions, which is, you know, it's crazy. And yeah. to see how they are able sometimes to, on the indie side, they're able to create, you know, yeah, you know, like, uh, like not very good, high visual tech, techy stuff, but still the whole message on it and the whole um, acting to it, like acting per se, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. And I mean, the inclusivity of that alone is like, really getting better as well i mean you can yeah. you can make films on films on films in several different brackets ranging from non-union to sag there's there's lots of options for new filmmakers and fresh filmmakers to just get out there nowadays so yeah. uh, it's great it's wonderful yeah and my last question if yeah. we could call yeah if we could have this episode we just did on a film how should we call it Oh, the cat got caught in the fence. <laughs> I mean, because that's going to be the title uh, uh, for this video. No. Um, hmm. For this. Quick coffee conversation. I don't know. Quick coffee combo. <laughs> Quick coffee combo. What would, we, what would we call this with us? I love alliterations. I'm always going for an alliteration on something. Mm. Down and dirty with Nikki New Roar. <laughs> there you go. You want that? Let's make that happen. Damn. I'm giving you options. Tell me what you want. What do you like? What do you like, see it as? I like the last one. Yeah, down and dirty with Nikki New Roar. Mm. <laughs> you know, it sounds interesting. You know, people won't see that. People won't see the title. Going to be like, what the hell is this about? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Happens, you know. I like it then. If you like it, I like it too. Let's make it happen then. We have a title. I love it. I mean, at the end, what can I say, Nick? It's incredible. You know, I love I love your career here and all of the, and all of the things that you do here. I mean, you're basically doing every you're, you're doing everything. You're killing it here. You know, it's obvious. But also, I mean, I, it happens, right? That, that that there were certain moments in life that you were thinking about quitting, I would assume. But hey, the fact that you're still hanging hanging in there, you're making it happen. You are working hard, you know. Um, yeah, and you're giving your 100% in everything. That's amazing. I mean, of course, that it's going to take time. But hey, you have achieved so many, so many, so many epic stuff. And I'm super sure that our next conversation is going to be about either the multiple thousands projects you have been in, writing, and the multiple thousands photos you have here for your modeling because you're killing, you're killing it here. And I do believe that great things happen for great people. You know, it takes time. But if you stick to it, they're going to happen. And that's going to happen for you. I'm super sure of it. Oh, Dan, you're incredible. Thank you so much. I really have enjoyed our talk here today. So thank you so much for having me on again. Um, I can't wait for the next conversation. I can't wait. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I do want to thank also those who watch this. Thank you so much. As I said at the beginning, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, follow. It helps a lot. Now that this conversation is done, you can let me know in the comments below what you think of it. And most important, since this, you know, this is about to be over, on the description below, you're going to find all the description, all the social media for Nikki. Let's make her viral. Hashtag Team Nikki because she's incredible. We all know that. And again, Nikki, thank you so much. Keep creating. But most important, keep being this incredible badass of a woman you always are. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much, Dan. All right.